right now. I'm going to give it up to uh, Peter, uh, one of our guys that wants to share a few words about the work we do in our church as a missionary. So, um, uh, Peter, can you come up here? I'm not sure if it was a true missionary trip. We just went to a rehab center just to see, you know, how things go there. Um, well, of course, you know, our desire is to share a testimony with whomever, wherever we go. And so there were people that spoke English. There were some people that spoke Indian, Armenian. Some spoke Russian. Some spoke broken English. Some spoke broken Russian. Um, it's interesting to see that no matter what uh, background culture we have and um, what kind of um, um, uh, nationality we are, we all have a similar struggle. And the struggle that I want <clears throat> to talk about is addiction. Because that rehab center is um, uh, where people go when they reach the bottom. They hit the bo uh, rock bottom and they have nowhere to go. They're struggling with their uh, whatever overpowered them, different kind of addiction. And of course, rehab center, it's mostly a drug addiction, you know, alcohol addiction. That's pretty obvious, but the word addiction is, um, is being dependent on something, right? Not necessarily a bad word, right? I mean, we have some, I don't know, maybe it's uh, not exactly the same, but it has a similar meaning. Like we're all addicted to air, right? We can't live without air, water, food. Um, some people here are coffee addict, right? I know a few for sure. Um, which uh, is an addiction too. Um, we, of course, we separate them, good and bad addiction. And coffee is somewhere on the borderline, right, Peter? I mean, if you wake up and you don't get your coffee, you're probably all cranky. Maybe. I've seen them. Or people they can't really function before they get their coffee or whatever it is they're addicted to um, which uh, probably points out to maybe uh, that's not a very good thing definitely and um, we all trying to justify our addiction like remember the Pharisee that he went to uh, to a synagogue or to temple to pray he was praying that prayer and he was saying, thank you, Lord, that I'm not like that person. And he started listing his, uh, you know, uh, things that he did that he thought that was a good, and they were good things. But the way he described that sinner, you know, um, those stereotypes, like we look at the person and we say, oh, that guy smokes cigarettes or he does that or that. And we label people based on that. And um, we, oh, we always look at ourselves differently. Things that we're addicted to, we, we find a way to justify that. Oh, it's not as bad. We, we look, it, it's just natural for us to see things that way. Um, but addiction is addiction. And it's just something that overpowers. Uh, and I, I, I'm going to read uh, from 1 Corinthians 2 verses, uh, chapter 10, 23. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but not all things edify. One thing I forgot to say, the things that we're addicted to. Uh, I forgot to list it, some good things. Um, like, man, I am addicted to my family. I'm addicted to my wife. I can't get enough of her. That's a good addiction, I think. I really am. It just uh, the things that she does in my life, I can't live without. I can't go on. And if uh, God forbids, I, I'm not sure how, I mean, things do happen. So um, I think that is a good addiction. I think that's how God meant to be. He, and the Bible says the two become one. You can't separate. You can't separate. Um, anyway, back to what I was reading in, um, in the Corinthians. Uh, another verse is a similar. Uh, chapter 6, uh, verse 12. All things are lawful for me, 
but all things are not helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not brought under the power of any. Bible says that all things, and it's, I don't think um, there was a typo here. I don't think it was a mistake. I think it, it and also Bible says that some people uh, may consider something to be a sin, but for another person it may not be a sin. Like for instance, some people consider eating pork is a sin. That's their faith. That's what they, they think it, it is wrong, so they don't eat. I would eat pork. I'm not a sinner because I have a different, uh, my, my, my faith is, is different as far as that goes. There's, there's certain things like that. And here, uh, Paul says that all things are lawful. So I can do anything. And some people use that as the guide in their life. Um, but not forget what it says here, but all things are not helpful. We have to consider it. We have to consider, like, and the reason why we don't, let's say, smoke, well, first of all, it's bad for you. It's bad for people around you. Uh, it stinks up the place. It's unpleasant, you know. So we don't do that. It, it is harming us. So we have to think about what we do and whether it brings harm or not. That should be a decisive factor when we choose do stuff, certain stuff, or not. We have to be honest when we evaluate that. We have to be. Otherwise, we'll, we'll may end up in a similar place like these people in a rehab center that cannot, could not help themselves. There was this guy, he was an Armenian guy that was born in Iran. Um, and then he moved here when he was 14. He became a drug addict. He lost his family. He had a wife. I don't know if he had kids. He didn't say anything about kids, but he lost a lot of things. His life was ruined, and um, um, he was suffering. These addictions, they bring suffering. First of all, people suffer in their body, in their soul, in their spirit. It brings suffering to them. So, and then he decided that he needs help. He couldn't help himself. He, he quit many times, but he would come back again and again. And um, so he went there in, in July, only to quit in a few days, because he, he was doing drugs right until the, the last day. And we know how hard it is for them the first week or so. Um, I'm not sure what they call it in English. Uh, but it, it's, it's really hard for them to over those couple of days when they're not doing drugs, their body break down. They're, it's very, very difficult without... Uh, uh, medical help they I'm not sure if anybody can can go through that so they they do accept some medicine to help see he couldn't he moved uh, he, he he went back and so in an, in a few days or so he started doing drugs again and at one point he overdosed he almost died half of his body was uh, uh, blue it was changing color he was dying and if it wasn't for his relative or somebody was doing CPR on him, they took him to a hospital. They couldn't find any veins in him because they all shrunk. They couldn't. They have to use um, the ultrasonic, like when they do uh, to, to look at the babies in the, in the, in the belly, right? Um, so that's what they did to, to find the veins in him. And the, the only ones that they found was on his throat. Anyway, so he was spared. And so he went back to uh, to rehab center. I'm saying that if um, if if we are allow our, if we allow ourselves to be under certain addiction, um, we can't help ourselves. It is it overcomes us, and um, it is it, it it will ruin your life. Whatever it is, if it is harming you in the way in the end, it, it may cause you a fatal harm too. And a lot of them die from overdose. We hear these stories over and over again uh, among our Russian population in the United States, back in Russia, people dying from all this stuff, from, from drugs, from alcohol, from me, uh, all these that we call addictions, right? Um, I'm going to read the, uh, Matthew chapter, um, no, John, chapter 8. Oh, I found my paper. Uh, John uh, chapter 8 
32, I think. Okay, 31, verse 31. Then Jesus said to these Jews, to those Jews who believed him, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered to him, we are Abraham descendants, and never, and have never been in bondage to anyone. How can you say you will be made free? Jesus answered them, most assuredly, I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin, and slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. God called us to be free from any sort of addictions that harms us. Um, in the spirit, in the soul, in our body. It all belongs to him. We are not chosen to be struggling like the uh, brother Oleg was saying. It is not our destiny. Our destiny to be victorious. Our destiny to be free from anything that uh, we may be addicted ourselves to. And I'm, I'm going to read that verse in, in, um, in Corinthians chapter 6, uh, verse 12 again to point out something. Uh, listen to this. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. The way it put in English here, it's, it, I think it sounds a little different. Um, I will not be brought down under the power of any. In Russian, it, uh, it says in a little bit different way. But in English, it, it uh, points it out that it is on me. I will not be brought down. It is choice that I make. It is up to me whether I'm going to be brought down or not brought down by that. I will not be brought down. It's a choice that we have to make. It's not an easy choice. And if we fail to make that choice at the beginning stages of whatever we are addicted to, you may need help. But that's why we're here. That's why we're here, to help each other. I know a few things that I struggle with that may not be sinful, but I find them maybe hindering in some way. Maybe it's technology that we have, internet and other things that deprive us of opportunity to, to go forward, to get closer to God, because we are maybe wasting our time on something else. Maybe we, uh, it prevents us to come closer to Jesus. Um, I think it would be a good idea if we call them what, for what they are, uh, whatever that is that, that is hindering us, addiction, whatever we're addicted to, and it prevents us to come closer to God. It needs to be addressed. It needs to be addressed one way or another. Otherwise, it will grow into a bigger problem. So today, I, um, I'm going to ask every one of you to stand up and pray um, about those things that hinder us, things that we are addicted to. We are chosen by God to be free. That is our destiny. Let's pray.